and welcome to the Foot Health Show here on UK Health Radio, your global, real, feel-good radio station. My name is Peter Alton of Circle Podiatry, and it's my aim to raise your awareness of just how important your feet are, to give you the solutions to your foot and leg problems, and to teach you how to prevent future problems. So grab a cuppa, relax, sit back and put your feet up and enjoy learning about the one part of your body that often gets forgotten. That's right, it's your feet. Hello and welcome back to The Foot Health Show, the show which aims to help you to be able to live with healthy feet for the rest of your life. I hope you have had a fantastic week. I hope you've been able to use your feet for lots of things. And I want you just to reflect, actually, before we go into the show today, just want you to reflect on what you have been using your feet for over the past week. Uh, Maybe some of you have walked a lot. Maybe some of you will be thinking, you know what, I haven't used them for much. But maybe you've danced on them. Maybe you've driven a car with them or pedaled a bicycle with them. Maybe you've been for a run, maybe a longer run than you normally do. There's a whole host of things that we take our feet for granted for every single day. And every single step, actually, it is quite a miracle the way the feet work because they are so complex and yet they're able to provide us with the the means to propel ourselves forward. They're able to provide us with shock absorption. They're able to adapt to uneven ground if we were to step on it. Um, They are really tremendous, as Leonardo da Vinci says, tremendous works of art and masterpieces of engineering, or words to that effect. And today, I was really struggling with, well, what am I going to do on the show today? Um, One of the interviews that I had hoped to do actually fell through. Um, and I've been thinking, well, what what can I talk to them about this week? Shall I pick a particular condition? Shall I pick um, maybe an ingrown nail or a verruca or a corn or a simple callus? What shall I talk about to them this week? And I thought, you know what? Often we do pick a particular condition, which is relevant to some of you. But I thought, you know what, one of the things that comes up frequently in my practice is they come in, patients come in, and they go out saying, I never knew that much about my feet. Wow, I'm going to take them seriously from now on. Because like probably many of you listening, a lot of patients who come to see us have never had their feet checked before. And I'm not talking about little kids coming who haven't had their feet checked before, although obviously that is the case sometimes. But adults, grown adults who've never thought to get their feet checked out. And pensioners who've never thought to get their feet checked out. You see, it's quite amazing that we do take our feet for granted quite as much as we do. We expect them to be fit for purpose from year one right the way through to year 85, 90, 100 even. We expect them to perform. And I think one of the things that we take for granted is just how complex they are. We have a mindset. There's the old Cockney saying of the plates of meat is what the feet are referred to in Cockney slang. And that is the mindset that many of us have, I think, is that they are just plates of meat. They're just there, part of my leg, on the end of my uh, leg, and they do their job. But it's much, much, much more involved than that. And what I want to do today is I want us to actually just get an idea of how complex they are. And I don't know how this is going to work because normally I do this in person in a clinic or sometimes I do it in a workshop or in a talk. Uh, when I've got the visual side of things. And this time, of course, I've only got audio. So this could go fantastically, or it could be an absolute disaster. Um, You do really ideally need to listen to the rest of the show 
whilst you are sitting down in the comfort of your own home. Probably not the best to do it on the train or on the tube. Um, probably best not to do it if you're sitting, um, I don't know, in a restaurant or something like that. You're probably best to do it in the privacy of your own home. And that's because I'm going to get you to play around with your own feet. Or for that matter, you could play around with your partner's feet. Um, but ideally, I think actually your own feet is a good start. Um, oh, go on. Let's make it fun. You can play with your partner's feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to look throughout the foot and see what they're made up of as best we can. Okay, obviously, we've only got the surface anatomy. We haven't got the ability to, to dissect your foot and look at it in detail. We haven't got x-rays. We're just going to be talking about your foot from what we can see and what we can feel on your foot, how complex the structure is. And I think you'll come to learn quite a lot about how complex they are, hopefully a little bit about what they have to perform every single step you take, and therefore, you'll appreciate the importance of them and also the need to get them checked out. Because I think you'll become apparent as you start checking your own feet out, you won't be sure whether they are normal or not. And even if you just look at your partner's feet, you know, one other person's feet, you'll see that there's quite a lot of differences. So are all those differences a problem? Not necessarily, but they could be. And you don't know that. So therefore, I would get them checked out. So let's uh, kick off and get started. OK, so I'm uh, literally going to be sitting here and talking it through with you what we're going to do. And I think what we ought to do is to start off with looking at the bones in the foot. Now, if you're listening to this uh, live and you're on route to somewhere in a car or something like that, um, on a train, then obviously you're not going to be able to follow this in quite so much of an interactive way as what I would hope. Um, so I would encourage you to go back and listen to it again at some point when you are in the comfort of your own home. But for those of you that are in the comfort of your own home, what I would like you to do right now is to slip your shoes and socks off, or at least one shoe and sock off. Uh, if you are able to, then sit with your foot uh, up onto onto your other knee, onto your other leg, thigh, so that it's close to you, so you can see what you're doing. Um, and then we're going to start just to look over the foot anatomy, surface anatomy, um, and work out just how many bones there are in the feet. Uh, I probably have said this before on the show, I'm sure, and many of you probably will remember it because it's quite a staggering number. Um, but, but yeah, just in your mind, actually, before we give the game away, I would like you just to think how many bones you think there are in the foot. And then from there, we will be able to maybe shock you as to just how many there are. So what we're going to do now, you've got your foot there you've got your partner's foot in front of you your foot in front of you what i want you to do is to put your thumb and index finger on your big toe nail so you've got your thumb on the nail you've got the index finger underneath or vice versa and you're grabbing hold of the end of your big toe so under that nail there you've got the first bone we're going to talk about and that bone is called the distal phalange of the hallux. The hallux is the technical name given to the big toe. So you've got one bone there. If you try bending that big toe at the knuckle of it, you will find that actually, yes, that bone we just talked about is the bit at the far end, but that joins at that joint with another bone, which is called the proximal. Proximal means closer to, closer to the body, the proximal phalange. And if we continue to come back along the foot to what most people would refer to as the ball of the foot, that is another joint. And if you flex your foot and bend your foot, you'll be able to bend it. Hopefully you will see that that is a joint with another bone, which is a big, thick one, which you can actually run your fingers up. And I'm doing this as I speak on the radio now. You can run your fingers up the big, solid bone that goes up 
into the sort of apex of the arch there almost. And that is called the first metatarsal. Okay, so how many bones have we counted there so far? We've got two inside the toe itself and then the metatarsal. So that's three bones there so far. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Now, before we go on and look at some of the other bones, I just want to pause there because it's the joint between this metatarsal and the proximal phalange of the hallux. It's that joint which often becomes a bunion and you're probably feeling that joint right now and if you feel that there's a bit of a bump on the inside edge of it or maybe you feel that there's a bump on the top of it uh, maybe the big toe is drifting towards the other toes and it's creating quite an angle then that is the beginnings of a bunion joint and there's various types of complaint and problem which can lead to that um, some people believe it's just footwear related. Personally, my view is that it's often footwear related, but largely it is hereditary, genetic, uh, in so much as the foot structure you inherit can lead to more unusual forces going through the foot and therefore the joints changing and the, the, the actual alignment of the toe joints changing. So uh, bunions can be a various degrees of seriousness uh, they start off as just sort of a grade one which is just a slight little bit of de deviation and a little bit of a bump and then a little bit more deviation becomes a secondary one and then a tertiary one would be where literally the the second toe is pretty much crossing over the big toe the big toes either crossed over the top of the second toe or under the second toe uh, and everything is getting very messy, crowdy, and by that stage, usually painful. Uh, bunions is a whole topic in itself, and we will come back to that at some point on the show. Bunions, what they are, what we can do about them, what we can't do about them, um, and importance of actually managing them so that they don't deteriorate, either the deformity deteriorating or lesions coming on them because of abnormal pressure because of the position that they're in. So that was the hallux and its metatarsal, three bones in total. Uh, we've got a lot more bones to go through, so let's uh, get moving on. The next uh, toe we're going to look at, if you like, is the second toe. The second toe is the one next door to the hallux. And if you grab hold of that one by the toenail at the end there and just squeeze that and bend it a little bit, you'll feel it bending just behind the where the nail is there. You've got that joint there. And the bone that you're holding is, the, again, the distal phalange, this time of the second toe. And that makes a joint with the intermediate phalange this time. OK, because on the second toe, we've got an extra bone that we haven't got on the hallux. We've got the intermediate phalange. And then behind that, that makes a joint with the proximal phalange. So three bones in the second toe, the distal, the intermediate and proximal phalange. And that's the same for the third toe, the fourth toe and even the fifth toe. Although those bones are getting pretty small by the time we get to the little tiny fifth toe. But there are three bones in each toe. And each of those toes articulates, has a joint with a metatarsal of its own. So each toe has its own metatarsal um, and the metatarsal comes back up the foot to sort of the, the, the top of the, the instep of the foot. And therefore, so far what we've got there is the four toes with the three bones in each. That's 12 bones by my reckoning. And then we've got the four metatarsals as well. So that's 16 bones plus the three for the hallux and its metatarsal. So that's 19 bones we've got so far just from the forefoot. 
And you can imagine, but that forefoot with all those bones, when you're pushing off, when you're towing off, there's a lot of force going through there. So those bones have got to be really, really in the right position and held properly. And one of the deformities that we find a lot of, we've talked about bunions earlier, the next deformity, and it can often go hand in hand with the bunion formation, is what we call a hammer toe. Now, any of those toes, the second, the third, and the fourth particularly, any of those can hammer. And what we mean by a hammer toe is that if you actually grab hold of yours again, provided your toe isn't too arthritic and firm, if you just try and bend it, you'll find that usually when you try and do that, the knuckle on the joint between the proximal phalange and the intermediate phalange, that knuckle will actually bend up. And that's what tends to happen. You get a bigger angle between the metatarsal and the proximal phalange, and then the toe turns back down again. So you get this little bump where that joint is high, and that creates problems with so many people because it it's not accommodated for in their footwear. And you get this joint which initially just looks a bit bent, but you can still straighten it. And then eventually it becomes more arthritic and it becomes rigid. So it's, you can imagine a rigid toe bent over. So you've got this peak, this big high bit that will be hitting shoes. The toe can't stretch out. You're in for problems there. And a lot of problems, particularly serious problems with people with diabetes come about because of deformities of the foot that have got lesions on them. So the reason I'm going through this again is just so that you guys can actually grasp how complex the foot is, how important it is to look after it, because things do invariably go wrong as the passage of time takes its toll. Now, we don't like thinking about the effects of the passage of time, but the passage of time absolutely will play havoc with many, many people's feet. And there's a lot you can do to be in control of the outcome, if you like. Be in control of what you're going to end up walking around on in your retirement years, for example. Some people will find it a struggle to get around to the corner shop, not because of their general health, not necessarily because they're out of breath or they've got a heart condition, but simply because their feet won't allow them. It's They're killing them. Or maybe their feet have caused their knees to wear out because of the way that they've been walking all their life. And then their knees have worn out and they haven't had a, a knee replacement because they are too scared or their health won't allow it. Um, there are so many things that we take for granted with our feet. But if we don't look after them, we can lose the opportunity to to do things with them. Sometimes I say to people in clinic, uh, maybe they've shared that they've just come back from a holiday. They've been somewhere really exciting on holiday. Um, and we get talking about the things that they've seen there. And you know, I say, you must be really grateful that you've got eyesight, that you can see these things. Or maybe it could be that you've got the sense of smell. I mean, I, recently when I was on holiday, I went to see some steam trains and I, I love the smell of a steam train. You can just shut your eyes even and not even look at it and just hear the noises and the smell of it is, is brilliant. But to have the, the vision as well, to be able to see that great big piece of metal, 70 odd tons of metal, breathing life almost as it um, lets off steam and as steam goes through the the cylinders and the pistons power the thing to move and it starts chuffing away with its uh, whistle going. Really, really powerful thing to see, hear and smell. And I say to people sometimes, you know, you went and saw these things. You went and smelt these things. You went and experienced the things you've done on holiday. But did you for one minute stop and appreciate the fact that your feet is what's taking you there? And that is why I think it is so important that we do respect our feet, pay some attention to them. If you haven't get them, got them checked out yet, get them checked out. Hopefully, this is beginning to come home to you now, just how important your feet are by doing this exercise, by getting hold of your foot, by feeling it, by appreciating it, by looking around it. So we've done the, the big toe 
and its metatarsal, that's three bones, and then we've done the other four toes with their metatarsal each, which is another 16 bones, 17 bones so far. There are actually two other little, what we call sesamoid bones, which sit under the joint of the first phalange and the metatarsal the first metatarsal and those two little cartilage type bones are called sesamoid bones um, and they sit there and act almost like a pulley for the flexor tendon the tendon which can bend the big toe downwards Thank you so much for sticking with us. I hope you've enjoyed so far looking at the bones of the foot. And I'm trying to get across to you just how complex your feet are, just how amazing they are, and just how much they have to do for you every single day. And I think appreciation starts by really understanding just how complex they are. Before the song, those of you that were here with us know that we went through some of the bones of the foot. We looked at and you felt the first 19 bones of the foot. We're now going to work our way backwards uh, into the midfoot and look at what bones are there. And for ease, I will start with, and remember, you're supposed to have your foot up so you can actually feel it, uh, or your partners, you can feel theirs. What we're going to start with is we're going to start with your finger touching the outside edge of your little toe and you're going to bring that finger back so if it starts at the very end where the nail is you've got that uh, distal phalange that we talked about you bring it back past the first joint into the intermediate phalange past that joint into the proximal phalange past the next joint into the metatarsal the fifth metatarsal that's called because we're looking at the fifth toe into that fifth metatarsal and then I want you to draw your finger along the side of your foot and eventually you'll feel a lump, a bump on the outside edge of your foot. Now some people come in thinking that's abnormal. It's actually normal. It is a prominence on the outer edge of the base of the fifth metatarsal. Now if you bring your finger back just slightly behind that prominence and up a little bit and you'll be overlying a bone called the cuboid and that cuboid bone sits behind that fifth metatarsal and partially across the fourth metatarsal base as well. Next door to that if you bring your fingers over the top of your foot you'll pass over the lateral cuneiform then the intermediate cuneiform and then behind the big toe, you'll find the medial cuneiform. Now, you probably won't be able to feel those individually themselves. You can actually, if you hold your whole foot and bend it from side to side, you can actually feel those joints moving, but they are quite hard to palpate the actual bone itself. But you've got those four bones across there, the cuboid, the intermediate lateral and medial cuneiforms now the name cuneiform uh, is latin and it means wedge shape um, you've got the cuboid which as the name suggests is sort of cubish um, and then there's one more bone there as well which sits behind those three cuneiforms and that is called the navicular um, and i believe that is latin for a boat shape um, it's a long fin bone which sits behind the um, cuneiforms there. Then behind that, you've got a bone called the talus. And the talus articulates with the navicular there. It articulates with the cuboid bone. It articulates with the tibia and fibula, which are the two leg bones coming down to meet the foot. And it also articulates with the bone beneath it, which is called the calcaneus or the heel bone. Now the calcaneus or the heel bone, it's quite a, a chunky bone um, and it's pretty substantial really and it has to take a lot of shock of course every single step you take uh, and that's why beneath it you've got a fatty pad which uh, helps with shock absorbing otherwise it would be rather uncomfortable. Uh, but there's an image that I have um, actually in my Bible which has 
some colour pictures in it uh, of archaeological finds. Uh, now, no one's claiming that it's uh, the heel bone of Jesus, uh, largely because Jesus, of course, uh, resurrected. Um, but there's a in this particular Bible, there's a picture of um, an archaeological find of a calcaneus, a heel bone, with a crucifixion nail through it. Um, incredibly jagged, horrible looking nail through this heel bone. Um, and that just gives you an idea of just how substantial it is that you could have a, a nail, a thick nail. And I don't know how thick it is, but it looks like it must be at least a centimeter, half an inch in diameter, this nail. Um, and it was not a nice, shiny, polished nail like you'd have nowadays. It's a rusty old manky thing, which uh, would have been even rougher to push through. Um, the point I'm making is that the bone is substantial. Uh, to be able to have a nail like that go through it, not shatter it, but go through it and be able to hold the person's weight um, is pretty, pretty sub sub substantial bone. And it really doesn't bear thinking about the pain that uh, people who were crucified uh, had to go through. It certainly was a, a horrible death. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. Anyway, moving on from that, um, the bone that I mentioned before the calcaneus was the talus. Uh, and I mentioned that the talus sits on top of the heel bone in between the tibia and the fibula. Now, the tibia is the leg bone, which is on the inside of the leg. It's the main one. It's the one which has the, the hard bit of bone that comes down your shin. You know, the bit which you when you bump into the side of a bed or something like that and you, you get that. There's not much flesh there. It hurts. Um, and then the fibula is on the other side. So you've got those two bony prominences, one on each side of the ankle joint. Uh, and if you feel those, those are the ends of those two bones, the tibia and the fibula. Um, and they're called the malleoli. Now, the talus sitting between those and on top of the calcaneus bone has an incredible the important range of motion. It has a triplanar range of motion. That means it moves in three different planes. Um, and what that means is that the foot can adapt brilliantly when it hits the ground. Because let's face it, we aren't designed to walk around on concrete floors all the time. We're not designed to walk around in shoes all the time. We're designed to be running around forests and fields. Our foot will hit all sorts of uneven objects uh, and it has to be able to withstand that adapt to it otherwise it would be more likely to cause an injury and more likely to cause a, um, a, a injury higher up the body so that joint in itself is amazing and the combination of all the joints and i just want you right now just to have your foot there in front of you and just try just watch it as it moves just spend a minute just try first of all putting the ankle joint downwards so the toes are pointing downwards and then bring the ankle joint up so the toes are pointing upwards and look at that range of motion and then try rotating your foot to the left and to the right, inside and outside. And there is an amazing amount of movement and different directions that the foot is able to do, considering it has these bones. Now, I don't know if you've been counting how many bones we've got up to now. Uh, I'm not counting the two leg bones because the two leg bones aren't officially part of the foot as such, even though they join the foot to the leg. Um, but if you count the ones that we've done so far, we had the three in the hallux. We had the 16 in the um, other toes. That made 19, if you remember. Then we had the three cuneiforms. That brings us up to 22. Then the cuboid and the navicular, bringing us up to 24. And then finally, that talus and the calcaneus, bringing this up to a total of 26 bones in each foot. Wow. So if you add those two together, because you've got two feet, most of us, 
26 and 26, that's 52. That is a quarter of the bones that are in your body are found in your two feet. Okay, so now's the time for you to wake up and start taking your feet seriously. They're complex. We just looked at the bones. That's all we've looked at. We haven't even started talking about arteries, tendons, ligaments, nerves, veins, all the other things that are going on within the foot. We're just talking about the bones here. So 26 bones, which need to be articulated in the correct way, the correct angle, and need to be able to behave with the right range of motion and be able to do what they're required to do as your foot hits the ground with incredible force when you're walking and even more force when you're running or jumping. So Leonardo da Vinci was absolutely right. The foot is a masterpiece of engineering. It really is. And uh, I hope that this exercise has helped you. It's helped you to be able to realize that you need to look after it. The more complex the car that you have, the more you need someone to look after it, to service it, to MOT it. And that's true, actually. MOTs, you don't get that done on new cars for the first three years because they don't need it. But just with your, as with your feet, as you get older, as they have more miles on them, you actually should be thinking, I need to get these checked out a little bit more often. And really, a yearly annual check would be good. So I said, we're not looking at the arteries and things today, but one of the things that we do in our annual check is to listen to the arteries as they come into the foot. Um, and actually, just while, while you're there, let's put your fingers um, behind that malleolus that I talked about. Remember, we talked about the two malleoli, the bones that stick out of the ankle joint, which are actually part of the tibia and fibula. So we're looking at the tibia one, the one on the inside, and put your fingers on that bone and then just bring them off it towards the back of your foot. And as you do, feel very carefully and you should be able to feel your heart beating in there, the pulse of the, what we call the posterior tibial artery as it comes around the back of that malleolus. And usually you can actually feel that quite strongly in there. If you can't, don't worry, um, but we should be getting, well, I say don't worry, if your foot's going a funny colour, then yes, maybe worry. Get get down somewhere to see it quickly. Um, but on a serious note, it would be worthwhile anybody going and getting their feet checked. And one of the things that I was mentioning before is that we listen to your arteries with a Doppler. And what that's able to pick up is it's able to pick up any arrhythmias. Um, so that's uh, an unevenness of the beating of your heart, which will be picked up with the arterial pulsing. Uh, but it also shows us whether the arteries are elastic or not, because the pulsatile flow of the blood through the arteries will be affected if they aren't they elastic. And you know why they don't get don't stay elastic? It's because they become hardened with damage over time. So high blood pressure can damage it. Smoking can damage it. Um, cholesterol can damage it. Uh, there's various different conditions which can also damage the arteries. And what we want is we want the arteries to be nice and elastic. And if that's the case, you get this triphasic flow through the arteries. You get uh, the sound because we listen to it. It goes. What we don't want is it to be going. Because that's triphasic, which is good, but it's very, very irregular. Um, and that would be something we would refer people on for. Some people do have irregular heartbeats throughout their life, but others can develop it. And that's why it's important if you're going regularly to get your feet checked. You know, if you have an annual foot check, even if you've got no callus and corns and things you need done, just having an annual foot check can pick up on things. And we've had people where one year they're fine, the next year they're not, and they end up having to go and have maybe a pacemaker fitted or maybe a bypass done, um, which if they hadn't had that foot check, the first thing they might have known about it would be a cardiac arrest or heart attack or something like that. So it is uh, a very valuable thing that you can get done. Um, so much so, in fact, using the Doppler that um, I believe from 
one of the Dopplers that I purchased, it had within it a whole range of forms for insurance companies over there in the States to be able to get referral of what the person's pulses were like because they want to know because they know, if the ones in the legs are showing up problems, they know that it's pretty likely that your heart and your brain also will have problems as well. So they, of course, can bump the premium up, I suppose. So you've probably picked up on a little bit today. I've uh, taught you a bit, I hope, about the foot structure. We're going to look into it in more detail in future um, shows here. We will look into the arteries in more detail. We'll look into the nerves in a bit more detail. Uh, maybe we'll talk about the ligaments. We'll talk about uh, how ligaments can get damaged, tendons, and how they can get damaged, um, often by overuse, often by suddenly doing more exercise and not building it up gradually. Um, the way the foot behaves is incredible. And it never ceases to amaze me when I have patients in and when we video them in slow motion. It never ceases to amaze me just how astonished people are by the way they see their foot working and how they see just just what is going wrong in the way that their foot is working. So if you haven't been to a podiatrist before, do go along. If you want to find one near you, go to the College of Podiatry website at www.cop.org.uk and there you'll find a list of uh, different podiatrists near to you. Alternatively, a day trip to London. We'd love to see you here at Circle Podiatry. We're based in London and in Surrey. Uh, we regularly have people coming to us. In fact, we've got a premier in. Oh, it's been up a year or two now. Um, brand new premier in. They're doing lots of development in the Lewisham area. Uh, and uh, literally, it's over the road from us. Uh, so we do have people coming down and, um, well, coming over from different countries even to, to get checked out. So I'd be more than happy to, to either myself or one of my colleagues uh, to be able to show you what we do here at Circle Podiatry and help you out. For those of you who don't know how to spell podiatry, it is P-O-D-I-A-T-R-Y. P-O-D-I-A-T-R-Y. And uh, we would be more than happy to help you out. You've been listening to The Foot Health Show here on UK Health Radio, your global, real, feel-good radio station. Remember, there's plenty of other topics that you can listen to on this station. There are so many things that you can do, both listening just to the weekly schedule, but also to the back catalogue of each of the presenters. They, we all have all of our previous shows up there on the UK Health Radio um, site. I know that I've shared with you how to get hold of my back catalogue by going to a quick link that we've produced, um, but you can go to the actual website and also find the same for the other presenters as well. And similarly, for my shows, everyone has a little description, so you can go onto the page, you can find out a little bit about the show before you listen to it, so you don't have to listen to the whole show if it's not something that's of interest to you. You've been listening to me, Peter Olson, here on the Foot Health Show. Been great having you with me for another week, and I look forward to speaking to you and with you again next week. Take good care, keep using those feet, and enjoy life. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, folks. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Foot Health Show on UK Health Radio your global, real, feel-good radio station. All that remains is for me to say, have a fantastic week. Keep safe, keep those legs and feet moving, and don't forget to tune in again with your friends next week.